Hello, and welcome to today's issue of Chapter by Chapter of Eye of the World. I am your host, Will Cowan, and across from me, digitally, Mr. Steve Haynes. How are you doing today, Steve? You know, much like the people of Emmons Field, I was tending to my corn today. You're corning it up. You're corning it up. And then mm-hmm. I remembered I have my chapter by chapter Lee responsibilities, and now here I am. But my corn <laughs> awaits. <laughs> You're just getting into the mood of like the the Emmons Field people. I guess it's kind of like the same way as like the Shire or something like that. When you first said that you were saying that you were talking about corn or like you were working with corn, I thought you were talking about Animal Crossing. <laughs> I wish I could plant corn in Animal Crossing. <laughs> but what you just suggested is silly. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, yes, we are uh, in Chapter 9 today. And Chapter 9 is Tellings of the Wheel. And let me tell you, let me tell you, Steve, this is this is a big chapter. This is arguably my favorite chapter so far of this book. The wheel has some tellings. The wheel has told a couple things. Uh, so at, when we left off last chapter, Rand went to sleep. He's waiting for his dad to wake up uh, after being treated by Moraine and some Aes Sedai nonsense, some little yep. powers. And he went to sleep just waiting for him to get up. Now, cue the night terrors. Cue the night terrors. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> this chapter opens up with Ran in a spooky hellscape, I guess. it's uh, Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, it's a spooky hellscape because it kind of opens up with him staring at a mountain, which I'm assuming is Dragon Mount. Like, there's all these... Yeah. Like, there's all these, like allusions to different things going on um first thing he i think he sees is dragon mount and then he's transported to this city this like beautiful city with like white clean towering buildings and this white tower that seems to be uh uh calling him um but there's like this isn't it isn't it tarvalon it it could be tarvalon it could be manetherin like we'll get into Manetherin later on uh, in this chapter, but it could be Tal- T- Tarvalon, but it has to do with something called uh, the White Tower, and I think that's in Tarvalon. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Tarvalon. Yeah. Anyways, during this dream, um, Rand is hearing like this voice call to him. He's like, "Serve me, serve me," and. Uh, Bring me corn. <laughs> Bring me bushels upon bushels of corn. I want corn. Yeah. It's great when I'm listening to the audiobook of it because the guy that does all the that is reading the book, he for all the evil characters in the book, he just does Skeletor. He he does it. And I I started listening to the audiobook as well. And uh he's he has some delightful performances. I highly recommend it. Some of them are fantastic. Other of mm-hmm. them, so, the others are like Skeletor. I enjoy me some Skeletor. Is all I'm saying. Like I said, like ah. I said before to you, man. Like you gotta, you gotta. Uh, what's the word? You gotta perform with the Skeletor voice when we do some of our glossary readings, especially if it's about. Will was stuff. trying to get me to read one of the previous glossary entries in a Skeletor voice, but it just wasn't working. I I, I really wish we had the recording of it because oh boy. Anyways, at the end of his dream of Rand's dream, uh, I believe he sees a mirror draw and it wakes him up, or maybe he sees like a dark figure or something like that. Yeah, there's a mirror draw in the tower. Right, 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 right. And that that kind of like spooks him to wake up. And uh and pretty much Tam is awake right next to him. Yeah, first of all, he sees some food and he's like, I'm diving in. And he starts like eating some meat and cheese. I think it's there's some soup in there. He just starts pounding back Oof. that food. And then Tam wakes up and uh he Tam is like, What happened? And Rand just t- explains to him the whole thing. The whole thing that leads up leads up to this point. Trollocs attacked. Apparently, they're out looking for people my age and uh, and targeted us from uh, Emmons Field and our farm and the surrounding farms. They were they were looking for us, and now 
uh, we have to go with Moraine to Tar Valon because yada, yada, yada. Like, he gives him the play-by-play all up to this point. He lays it all out. Lays it all out. And surprisingly, where Rand was like, Tam's going to tell me to stay, that he's going to say that this is this is the way to do it, is just stay and be safe with him. Tam instead... He's says, like, go get it. Go get it. He's like, go. Go for it. Yeah. And uh, that takes Rand back, but he's like, I guess I'm doing this now. Then uh, I believe uh, Land shows up and he's like, He also gives him the sword, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. It's like, That's your sword. I can't remember. He's like, th- keep a, yeah, the sword that he's been, that he's been using. He's yeah. like, Keep the sword. Yeah. It's yours now. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the extent of that conversation. And then Land. Uh, the warder comes in. He's like, that sword still doesn't mean anything. It's a worthless sword. <laughs> I promise you. But I want it, you to keep it as your personal sword. Nobody, there's nothing, there it's, is nothing about that sword that is at all interesting. None yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, it's a piece of shit, but use it. <laughs> Please. Uh, then Lan shows up and he basically dra- uh, drags Rand out. He's like, we gotta go. Like, we gotta, we gotta get going on the, on, on the big old, on the big old adventure. And then as yeah, the, well, he's like, isn't he? Isn't he like we gotta go because like dan- like danger, danger, Will Robinson. Yeah, well, like I think he's um, I think he's talking about the. I was I was listening to the chapter two days ago. I think from what I gathered was uh, he's like either he's referring to the danger of the Trollocs, which is already kind of like a constant danger anyways, or he's referring to the event that's happening downstairs in the inn where a whole bunch of people are basically are gathering around. Yeah. They're like, uh, protesting Moraine being there, Moraine and land being there. And, uh, yeah. as Rand and land go downstairs, they're basically fielding off this like angry horde of people. that are just like, get, the Aes Sedai out of there. They brought the Trollocs. We don't want to deal with them. Yada, yada, yada. Then Moraine does this thing, that, which is by far my favorite thing in the books so far. It's where she starts spinning the staff. Like, zzz, 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 zzz. Just zzz, 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 zzz. And like sparks are shooting out of it. Like fire. Like, yep. just, just, and then she's like, shut up all of you. I'm going to tell you a story. And I love this. She, listen. She's a performer, okay? okay? She has to do a little pizzazz, a little razzmatazz before she starts telling a story. She has to capture your, your interest and set the scene. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, she does it great. She does, like the little, the spinning that she does with her, with her staff, magnificent. Mwah. She, the gleeman could take a few notes from her. And she yeah, starts the staff? <laughs> and she starts telling the story of the the people of Emmons Field and like not just the the people that are there right now it's like the history how of, it how, yeah like what was there before like the the land more than the town yeah 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 and she starts telling that this this land was called uh the the right the White River this whole area was called the White River but it was also kind of called uh Methen Metherendriel I think that's I'm saying that right I might be butchering it Metherendriel maybe yeah yeah that's kind of like if that's let's call it like the province the territory is kind of called methan methan drill and uh it was once ruled by this king named amon and this queen named uh idrain eldrain eldrain and uh they were around during the trolloc wars and uh i think before we get into the rest of the story what are the trolloc wars there steve get into that glossary use the skeletor <laughs> voice <laughs> <laughs> the Trolloc Wars, <laughs> a series of wars beginning about 1000 AB and lasting more than 300 years, during which Trolloc armies ravaged the world. Eventually, the Trollocs were slain or driven back into the Great Blight, but some nations ceased to exist, while others were almost depopulated. All records of the time are fragmentary. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was beautiful. You asked for it, and you got it. It was by popular demand, and by popular, I mean me. That's popular to me. So, yeah. So, Eamon and Eldraine were 
uh, king of queen of Methandriel and, spe- and speci- Methandriel and specifically uh, the city that was in the that was in uh, the province or the, in Methandriel. Meth- Men- Menetherin. 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 Oh Oof. There's gonna be a lot of this, folks. Yep. <laughs> And uh, Menethrin was kind of this, um, this, this stage for the final, like one of these final battles against the the Trollocs and the Trolloc Wars. And when Moraine's t- telling this story, she's highlighting the fact that when the Trolloc Wars were happening, and when the Trollocs were coming down, and they like outnumbered the people by, you know, thousands to one. It was guaranteed that the Trollocs were going to win the people. There was no hope. There was no hope. It was the, decimation. Yeah. It was fatalities. Oh, left, right, and center. But the point was that she was making was the people stood their ground. You know? They did. And everyone fought. Everybody fought. Saying. There wasn't a single soul that didn't fight. Yeah, exactly. Like, And uh, I love that the way that she describes it, which was, like, I think it was just every man, woman, and child, like, doesn't matter, like, if they had pitchforks or just regular forks, butter yep. knives. Hey, a regular fork is a great weapon. People underestimate it. You know what? You're right. You can do a lot they of They marched out into the field, and they fought, and that, like Steve said, they pretty much all died. <laughs> there was no pretty much. They all died. They they all died. Um, With the exception of, like, I think there was a... Uh, a group of people held back that that escaped into the woods or something like that. But to at the very, very end of the battle, when it, when it was all hope was lost, Eldraine call, called upon the one source, the one power, and base and like annihilated all the Trollocs, like just laid waste to the land. Yeah, spirit bomb. Yeah. Bombed all of those Trollocs out of the way. Yeah. And that relatively kind of wraps up that story. The, her point was trying to make that the people were strong, like the people of Evansfield were strong people. You know? Yeah. And then after, um, yeah. after she wraps up that story, the people of Evansfield that were all like, yelling at yelling at them and like telling telling her to fuck off and all that stuff uh they kind of like take it back a couple a couple paces and they you know scuff their feet around they're like well okay like we're yeah, sorry they're kind of like oh well you didn't say that yeah you didn't tell us that which kind of uh, brings up okay. a weird question back as, off like I, like I wonder what the story kind of does because like if I was those if I was the Evans Field people and like the and Moraine just like said like but you're all good people that doesn't necessarily mean that she's a good person but I guess it's like a heartwarming story enough that she's that they're like okay we'll let you go this time or at least or maybe it's like it was some real talk is what it was real talk is it maybe it's illustrating the uh the threat of the Trollocs. Not exactly sure. But whatever whatever it does, it basically just calms down the mob. And they all take a few seconds. It basically makes them ashamed. Yeah. Like it basically makes them ashamed of their actions and for being dicks. And yeah. they're kind of like, okay. And they all just sort of break up. Yeah, exactly. And that, more or less, that's and pretty much where the chapter ends. Yeah, and then lands like, remember when I said we gotta go, guys? Yeah, and then we gotta bounce. go. Literally 20 pages later, an hour of reading later, where he's like, we got to go. Come on. And also in the story, El- Eldrine dies because she uses, she Luke Skywalkers yep. and uses too much power and dies. Yeah. So. I always, what, the way I read it was like, when she called down the power, she was like, when she made that huge explosion, she was also part of that explosion. You know what I mean? You know how like Kinslayer did it in the in the prologue? I read it as she died, like she was, but what actually killed her was using all the power, not the explosion. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll accept it. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, that pretty much wraps up the chapter. Uh, then tomorrow we're getting into chapter 10, leave taking, and we'll get, that's basically where the journey begins, which I'm excited about. It's a short one. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for listening. We've been chapter by chapter and we'll get to you guys tomorrow. 